Boy, so it's almost deja vu today. You guys played Sloss Fest like I guess two years ago, right? right? Yeah, last year there was this rainstorm that never really developed, but was enough to be a nuisance, and it killed our best festival. Which this year, everyone was so bummed about it, but we thought, eh, but it's okay. We've got that date at Oak Mountain with Beck, right? Spoon and Cage, and then it looked like, oh no, it's like the be. exact, mm-hmm. the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. Has this been? Uh, has this happened at all on the tour? Well, it didn't happen until this last week. Uh, it happened in Philly. Happened in one other city. Where were we? Right after Philly. Durham. It's, it's been a long tour. Yeah. Um, happened in two cities, and then and then it chilled out. Yeah. But yeah, there were two. This is the third show. Yeah. Oh. Where it keeps it keeps interrupting, and then the show gets delayed. Yeah. How did this whole thing come together? Like, Cage asked you, is that what happened? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, Matt called me last December and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I thought that was cool. It was a classy move. We've, you know, every now and then we do opening shows. I've done a number of them throughout my, our time as a band. And, uh, but never I've had, never have I had like a band member actually call me. It's usually right. goes through a manager or a, right booking agent or something That's back cool. i mean he's like uh is this the first time you've ever toured with him first tour yeah yeah he was here last year and we got to do this type of thing that you and i are doing oh really um and he was exceptional like he was just one of the more normal nice guys he is. in that situation yeah. and we talked about like just old country music and whatever and he put on a fantastic show and he was nice to the kids that came back and like talked to him and so i just have to assume this has been a pleasurable you know month and a half tour or whatever it's been it is. It's just. Uh, it's a really fun tour, and everybody on it is cool. And um, honestly, I could go for another month or so. I don't know about everybody in the band. Right. I, well, you I have, have this extra fun. room it's back like, here. It's a party every night. You know, like it's. There's a show. It's a big event, and um, it's just you get to know, you know, become fond of all of the crew members. Right. Too, sure. You know, like it's just. It's a huge crew. It's a huge traveling, like a traveling city basically, and it's. Uh, it's just super fun. I love it. He does that thing where he changes genres. You have somehow like kept the same genre over 25 years and changed sound. Like albums will change sound. And right. There will be, you know, uh, real drums versus, you know, like a, a drum machine on some stuff. Right. But, but it's been the same genre. Have you felt that to be just a natural thing or do you, do you ever try to, because like with him, I guess it's a, he tries to change genres every now and then, but it's just worked for you to keep the same thing. Natural, yeah. I think some people just have to recreate themselves to keep like who, producing good music. Who was it I heard say that if you want to change the sound of your band, change the drummer? Oh and, shit, I was a drummer. And, so, uh, so uh, you don't you don't change the drummer, you're gonna have the same sounding band. Mm. Um, just go to drum machine. <laughs> That's it. Well, I just you know it's a different s- scenario between. Spoon and Beck because he works with different he can work with whatever musicians he wants right. each record a, yeah a Fender but it's not just any Fender Telecaster it's like it's your actual it's like named after you it's the Brit Daniel yeah. Fender's Telecaster sorry yeah right so what's the uh, how did that come about that's a huge deal it is a big deal it's one of the coolest things I've been involved with and they uh, they just called me it was like two years ago called and said do you want to would you be interested <laughs> in doing a, a guitar? And I was, uh, I said, yeah. Did you hesitate at all? Not at all. I was, no. I was so psyched. You know, it was awesome. What's I, the process then? Like, what about it is specific to you? Then I got together with the guys at Fender. We went. I went to their um, their main office in LA, and we talked about types of Fenders that I'd had, and the, the ones that I've been playing over the last ten years are t- are thin line Telecasters, and so we. Um, talked about basically combining the two the two telecasters that I've been playing for the last 10 years like the best features of each right that was the sort of general guideline and the first prototype that I got was it was close <laughs> it, it had some things I wanted to change and then every time it got closer and closer we made four four different prototypes would you change which was the first fun. time because I- the paint was not the the um, just a simple thing like the the wood grain was shining through and I didn't want that and then the pickups were not right seems uh, like the pickups would be the easiest thing to kind of originally well, pick we, out right 
they, I just wanted, I wanted, we hadn't really honed in on it. We just made a prototype that was with the basic information. And then I was like, well, I want the, pr the pickups to be a little um, pointier and hotter. And so then we did that. And by the third prototype, it sounded awesome. Yeah. You, know, yeah. Um, you guys obviously from Austin. People talk about Austin a ton as far as like keep it weird or whatever. And now it's not weird anymore. It's this big city. What's your, what's your take on all that? For me, I mean, I stopped playing South by Southwest, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago. So it's been other than just driving through, it's been a long time. What do you, what do you think Austin, like where is it right now? I still love Austin. There's still there's still plenty of it that I recognize and love. You know, um, I'd kind of rather be there than anywhere. And when I go, when I know I'm going back, I'm I'm happy. Yeah. Um, I start thinking about where I'm going to eat. But uh, yeah, food. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's things that have changed. It's a much more expensive city. It's the downtown is a completely different scenario than from when I moved there. And it's there's good and bad things about that. And it's. Um, some of the greatness, some of the great places have died away, but I think that's just going to happen. Sure. You know, it's natural. Yeah. I still love it, but it's just, it's, it's becoming a little too expensive for musicians to just live there and do what, you know, I doubt that the butthole surfers of, of 1988 could live in Austin. Now it's too damn expensive and it's, and there aren't really cheap, big houses you can rent and go crazy in, you know? Right. Yeah. Gosh, are there anywhere? I'm trying to think. Maybe outside of Birmingham. <laughs> That's what I keep wondering. Is like, where is the place? There's got to be a place in America right now that is like Austin was in the 90s. I mean, you know, I've always, you know, people give Alabama a hard time about like, ah, oh, rednecks here. There are. There's no doubt. But also like upstate New York. Like anytime, for me, I feel like when you get outside of a big city in almost any state, you run into kind of the same thing. People who aren't quite connected Right. with you know uh, a diverse culture and that have those experiences of like ah this is weird for me right. and maybe the houses there aren't quite expensive right I don't know. yeah I, yeah i think that the cost of the place has a lot to do with it right you know that's that's why uh what brooklyn exploded for a while and now it's so expensive that nobody you know it's yeah it keeps getting further and further out in order to be affordable yeah no question well really psyched to have you guys back in birmingham and glad that the set went on despite yeah, I all didn't, this mess I, for honestly i thought that we were not going to play for oh me. i completely thought you yeah. guys weren't going to play i sat yeah. in the car for hours and hours like oh, that's fine you know were you having to wait in the car well I yeah it's they fine send, they send everybody no, i mean i guess i could have come back here but whatever well, you know I'm not gonna bother like well yeah no i was just curious what the procedure was i know no, that, that was it everybody. so like yeah the, so they stopped everyone that was coming in right as sunflower was sparks gonna start right. playing and they just made everybody go back to the cars so we just sat outside and waited for what was that three hours two hours right yeah two and a half hours yeah is that safer yeah no <laughs> but it's, it's no longer their responsibility exactly so at that point yeah but either way you guys did it and it sounded great thanks, um man. 30 minutes as opposed to 45 but it was all good yeah so cool thanks brett thank you good to talk to you